Welcome to part two of the tutorial on how to use Photomechanic and Lightroom for your sporting event workflow. In part one, I explained how to prepare for a racing weekend and a workflow during the event. In this part, I will explain how to set up Photomechanic and Lightroom to make it work like I showed in part one. Let's begin uh, looking at Photomechanic first and I go to Photomechanic Preferences and under the General tab you see the color classes. The color classes needs to be the same in Lightroom and Photomechanic. So the colors need to be the same and the color names need to be the same. In Lightroom you cannot alter the colors and color names so you have to copy these settings to Photomechanic. First of all, let's look at Lightroom, how they are called and what colors they are. So here I am in Lightroom, in the library mode, and on the bottom right you see the colors. If you cannot see them, you click on the arrow and you check color label. See, here are the colors. Lightroom only has five colors. And if you right click on a color, you see the color names. It's depending on your system. Uh, in this case, the color names are in Dutch and yours probably will be English or another language. But they need to see, be the same in Photomechanic and Lightroom. So if you look at Photomechanic, you see the same colors and you see the same color names. To show you how they work between each other, I'm a photo mechanic and I'll change this one to green. Now if I go to Lightroom, here's the same image and this image is still purple. If I right click on the folder and I synchronize the folder and scan for metadata updates, it's checking if there is something changed in the background and here you see now it's green like in Photomechanic. The other way around, let's say this one I want to turn it purple again. If I now, now go to Photomechanic, you will see it's altered automatically. The same thing goes for cropping the image. I'm in Photomechanic, and let's say I want to crop this image. So I use the Crop tool, make it a bit smaller, If you go to Lightroom, you see the image is the same. It's not cropped like it's in uh, Photomechanic. So I need to do the same thing. Right click on the Edit folder, synchronize it, and it's looking for changes in the background, and you see here's the cropped image. The other way around, go to the develop mode and let's change the crop again. Now I'm in Lightroom, changing the crop. Click on done. If go back to Photo Mechanic, you see it's updated immediately without synchronizing or anything else. It's doing it automatically. Here I am back in the library mode. Let's go to Photomechanic again and let's see the rest of the settings. Go 
go to preferences and let's see the next step. Uh, here's the contact sheet. Um, if you want to copy my settings, just post the video and compare your settings to mine. I removed the check mark for uh, combining the, the thumbnails. It's over here. Um, I work with two cameras and sometimes the numbering of the photos is the same. Uh, no problem if you import JPEGs uh, uh, only, but if you decide to put one camera on RAW, Photomagnetic thinks it's the same photo in RAW and JPEG, so it doesn't show you the JPEG. That's why I don't let Photomagnetic combine the images into one thumbnail. These are my file settings. I uncheck this one. You don't want any sound. If you were, uh, if you are in the in the media center, you don't want the trash sound. And next one, the launching settings. Uh, sometimes I want to use Luminar 4, so I choose this one as uh, the default application, but you can also choose uh, uh, Photoshop or uh, something else. Under the IPTC uh, settings, um, best thing you can do, you see uh, a lightning here on the right side. If you click that, you can click on Adobe products. Then it's setting up um, photo mechanic to work together with all Adobe products. I only uncheck this one because it isn't necessary to work uh, with uh, with photo mechanic and Lightroom, so I'll uncheck uh, that one. Then we go to the preview settings. Uh, I let the uh, the preview outward fonts and the color class is changed. So when checking the images, I give them a, a red or a green uh, color uh, class. And immediately when I click on the color, it's going to the next image. So that's because this one is checked. And the rest of the tabs, again, just post the video to compare the settings. I will go to them through them uh, slowly, so you can see my settings. Nothing spectacular. It's the same. And here we are back again in the general uh, tab. Let's see the settings in uh, Lightroom. Go to Lightroom Classic, and then I hit Preferences. Well, nothing special here. I will show the tabs again so you can compare them to your own uh, settings. Again, most of it is default settings, so nothing special to let it work with Photo Mechanic. Most settings are done in Photo Mechanic to work together with uh, Lightroom. Now we go to the special settings for the automatic sorting of the images. Uh, for the automatic sorting, I use a plugin called JF Collection Publisher. I will give you the link in the description below. If you go to the website, you can download the zip file. And on the Mac, it's automatically unzipped. On the PC, you have to unzip it yourself. and um, you have to put it on a convenient place. So I suggest uh, you make uh, a folder 
uh, with all your plugins and put this plugin in that folder. I have my plugins over here in the plugin folder. For now, I have only this plugin, but you can put the all the plugins you want in here. And when you go to Lightroom, we go to File, we go to the Plugin Manager, and in my case, it's already here. But if you if it isn't here, you click on Add. You browse to the folder you just made. You select the plugin and you add the plugin. When you added the plugin, it's over here, and here are all the details of the plugin. So you can check for the for new versions, and in my case, I got a registered version. You can try it out for a couple of days, but then you need to make a donation. And if you want to export more than 10 images, uh, no worries, it doesn't cost you a month salary, so um, you can donate an absolute minimum of one cent, but I would say give Jeffrey some love and give him some more. So you can have a cold beer or something else. After the plugin is added, you click on done. Now we want to make our first publish service. So we go in the library mode to the publish service on the left side. You click it open. Then you click on the plus sign. And you go to the publish manager. I already got a couple of them, but let's make a new one. So I want to add a new service, the JF Collection Publisher. I will give it a name, test, and I create a new one. Here we can fill in all the options we want for the exporting uh, of the images. Uh, the name is already here, so we go to the export folder, the publish tree, I will choose the export folder, and I have a test export folder here. I choose that one. There's no renaming. I want to turn it into a JPEG, sRGB. I limit my file size to 2500K. I will resize my images, the width and the height, to 42 centimeters. And 3 on a PPI. I want to sharpen them for screen. I want all data, all metadata. I don't want any watermarks. All this is standard. I want the caption to re-trigger, uh, of to trigger the republish. And I want to delete published copies from the disk when the originals are removed from Lightroom. So it stays in sync. No more settings. So I save it. And you see the new collection publisher test I just made. 
The publisher is uh, still empty because we need to make uh, the rules for a smart collection. Uh, those of you familiar with uh, Lightroom smart collections also know how to make these settings. This plugin is just making it possible to publish your smart collection and keep it in sync. So, how to make the smart collections? It's depending on what you want to do. But let's look at our example of the Formula 4. I have the Formula 4 over here. And here's a folder I created. And in the folder are all the drivers and all the teams and all extra uh, folders I want to create uh, out of the publisher automatically. How do I make these things? Let's go to our test folder and let's make a folder over here. So I right click and I choose create subfolder and I will call it test and I hit create. So here's our folder. Let's open the formula 4 so we can see what we are doing and over here I want a driver so I want to create a rule so I right click on the just made folder and I click on create smart collection and let's say um, I want to create uh, uh, one folder for a driver called uh, Bart. So what I do, I call this one Bart. It's in the folder test. And I want it to search for the text that contains the word but so any searchable text has to get uh, contain but furthermore i want to start photos of every race in his folder to make that possible i click on the alt and then you see the plus sign changing into a hashtag over here. So I push on the alt and then I click on the hashtag. Now you get a second rule. And I want any searchable text that contains the word race. That's because I put the name start photo race one in the description. So any searchable text must contain the word race. But I want to decide which start photo I want for the drivers. So it must also contain uh, five stars, a five star rating. So I click on the plus sign, rating, is five stars. And the last thing we need uh, to do is to check what rules apply. I choose any and all of the following are true. What is it doing? It searches for photos which contains the word bad, the name of the driver. And any of these two rules must be through to uh, collect, to make the collection uh, fill with photos. So it contains the word race. 
and the rating is five stars. These two must be true to put them in the folder. And the collection type. If I export or if I publish this collection, I wanted to make a folder with the name I gave it in the beginning. So if I create this one, you see driver Bart with all the photos, including the start photo and all the photos of this driver. For the start photos, I can, can create its own rule. So let's say I click at root, I click with the right mouse, bu mouse button, create a smart collection, I call it race all photos. These rules aren't necessary. Only thing I want to do, if it contains the word race, I want to show it. So it's searching for all photos which contains the word race. I create it and I see four photos. Three of them got already five stars. So these three I can find back in the folder of Bart. Here's one of them. If I click on all photos again and watch this number there are 34 photos for Bart, but if I check five stars for this photo, you'll see there are 35, because this photo is put, it, uh, is put automatically in Bart's folder. Let's make it zero again, and it's gone. Let's take a look at the already created smart collections. So in the Formula 4, there are all the drivers, all the teams. Let's take a look at MP Motorsport. It's a team. How did I set up the team folder? Well, if you right click, you can click on Edit Smart Collection, so you can see uh, what I put in for the uh, smart collection for the teams. Well, of course, it's the name MP. It's searching for words MP, but also it's looking for five stars. Why five stars? I uh, don't want all the pictures of MP uh, for the team. I want to make a selection. So I'll go through all the drivers of MP and uh, the photos I want for the team, I'll give them a five star rating and then it's put in this folder. These two are the same as uh, for the drivers, so they also get the starter photos of the race. So these are the rules for the teams. You only have to set up these uh, settings at the beginning of the season. So if they are all done, you don't have to alter them again. Um, to make it easy for you to uh, make a new driver, uh, for example, you only have to right click and you export smart collection settings and you give it the name driver and then it's saved so if there is a new driver let's say there's a new test driver and 
I want a new driver in here. I click with my right mouse button on F4 and I import a smart collection setting and I have a new driver over here. So here he is. Only thing I have to do, right click, edit the smart collection, alter the name for the driver it is and let it create its own subfolder and save the new driver. For now, I will delete the driver. You see, uh, I don't got uh, a real driver name in here, but it's already searching for the uh, start photos. So it's filling this new folder already with the start photos. I will delete it for now. Same goes for uh, new teams. Let's say there's a new team and here's my new team. I import the settings and here it is. Here's the new team. Same goes for all the other settings. So the day selections, for the day selections, I want to give color ratings. So I only have a label color. When it's purple, it's day selection one. That's the only thing it's looking for. Same goes for the other selections and for my Facebook selection. Facebook selection is blue. And all the drivers, when you look at them, at the smart collection, you see the same settings. Driver Martinez, it's containing the words Martinez, of course. And for the race, five star rating and the word race. And then it's put in this folder. So automatically it's all put in this folder. Well, that's all there is to it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, just type it in the comment sections below and I will try to give you an answer as soon as possible. Uh, don't forget uh, to hit the subscribe uh, uh, button to see more tutorials in the future.